What's up everybody and welcome to another episode of Supreme Decisions and it's your boy Supreme Decisions and today I want to talk about something because a lot of times we're having these issues where people are calling the police and pretty much working as informants for the most part but I want to give you a couple of contexts from this I've given you uh, one case I'll put it somewhere like it'll be somewhere around me but I, I gave you a case which dealt with anonymous tips because in most cases when you have these people that are calling the police and they're doing it for whatever reason because they don't like something or they're they're placing their feelings or what they should think feel or believe into the place of what is actual law it becomes detrimental why because the police officers that I say they're not designed to solve any case they're just doing stuff to generate revenue so whenever we're seeing these things kind of act out or initiate let's look into what's supposed to be done because like I said when I when someone gives an anonymous tip there's a procedure to it because the use of it has to be done in a certain manner well the, today's case I'm going to give you is Spinel v US 393 US 410 and it's a 1990 1969 case yeah it wasn't recent it wasn't even close it's an old 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 case because uh, that case is older than me but what it talks about is an informant's tip an essential part of an affidavit in this case which is pretty much what they use was not sufficient even as corroborated by other allegations to provide a basis for finding probable cause that a crime was being committed because remember I talked about when a crime is being committed, probable cause is something that's tangible. People saying it, even multiple people saying the same thing, only makes someone a party of interest. It, it sparks an investigation. The problem lies here is investigators. They choose not to do what they're supposed to do or what they are, or are they doing what they're trained to do? might be why we're looking to reallocate how they're paid and who's being hired to do it. Anyway, we talk about the simple essence of the probable cause of something that's tangible because an actual crime has been committed as well as there's a injured party that can fairly trace the actions of the person that's being accused to the damage to one's person or one's property because again gave you the case on that as well because that is the corpus delecta the body of the crime words shouldn't be able to hurt someone someone's feelings should not dictate law but here's where the accountability measures must come in because we overlook or we allow things such as this to go on we are actors in our own detriment we are actors in the own in our own liability of things that are being done so if you want change you must become something that is in opposition of the current mode of behavior you must become the director of that change so knowing that even if one person gives police information that does not support even if done by multiple people the finding of probable cause. It only is something that sparks an investigation. You know, when I talked about in Terry v. Ohio where they used the word hypothesis. Where else do we hear hypothesis? Science. Because then they use their hypothesis to fit evidence to their findings. Or feelings. Because that's what a hypothesis is. Now, knowing that, that's all I have for today. Remember, join the channel, pick a tier, become part of the Supreme Society. Matter of fact, do the $100 bracket and become a VIP and get super discounts on merch that I actually already have and things that are coming in the future, as well as become part of the master class that will be taught monthly and will be going up shortly. Support the podcast. Supreme Decisions 
Legal Minute Podcast. 99 cents, $4.99 or $99, $9.99 per month. Let's keep going. Let's keep growing. And as you see, we're getting better. Supreme.